Go ahead. Biden said we would punish Putin with sanctions, but maybe we could also use military operations. What are your thoughts? Okay, listen, Jen, uh, Putin thinks we're weak. Is Biden okay with Putin thinking we're weak? What are we going to do to show Putin that we're strong? Go ahead. Knock, knock. Um, who's there? It's Putin. He's in Ukraine, very close to the border of a NATO nation. Are we going to do a no-fly zone? If Zelensky asks for more military support, who are we to say no? Yeah, no pressure at all, just wondering. But if you're not going to sell them the planes, do you mind if I do? Yes. Yeah, if a Russian soldier makes a paper airplane and throws it and it lands in Poland, does that count as an invasion of a NATO nation? Would we escalate militarily at that point? Yeah, just me personally, I feel like Afghanistan's basically ancient history at this point, and the situation in Ukraine is awful. But what might make it better is more U.S. military weapons. Go ahead. Yeah, Jen, Madam Secretary, I already bought the Lockheed Martin stock. Are you saying I shouldn't have? Yes, Ryan. Are we supporting the peace talks between Russia and Ukraine? We are supporting the ongoing peace talks between Russia and Ukraine. I have no problem making fun of the media who is so focused on escalation at a time when peace talks are ongoing. That is exactly what a no-fly zone has the potential to do. A no-fly zone means the U.S. military shooting down Russian planes in Ukrainian airspace. This would shift the United States' position from supporting the peace talks and supporting Ukraine's right to defend itself to directly fighting Russia. Not to mention Russia is a nuclear power and Putin has hinted at using that power if the United States were to get directly militarily involved. There are limitations to a no-fly zone. Russia could still fire cruise missiles into Ukraine. The rocket that hit a military base near the Polish border this week reportedly came from a bomber in the Black Sea. But Zelensky has captured the minds and hearts of the American media and by extension the American people. This week, he said, Is it a lot to ask to create a no-fly zone over Ukraine to save people? Is this too much to ask? A humanitarian no-fly zone? So that Russia would not be able to terrorize our free cities. These words hold a lot of weight when we see destruction in Ukraine on TV all day long. From injured pregnant women being taken out of buildings, to children crying, to cities turned to rubble, and interviews with Ukrainian people in bunkers who have lost family members in the conflict. This, in combination with members of the press constantly asking about a no-fly zone, pushes a dangerous narrative, and it's an effective one. A recent poll showed that 74% of Americans support a no-fly zone over Ukraine. And it might sound nice to protect the skies over Ukraine until we understand exactly what a no-fly zone means.